In this video, we are going to review how to utilize variables within your custom components for formwork conditions. Creating subassemblies for every possible combination of height, width, or other dimensions can be a tremendous task. Fortunately, there's variables that we can use in custom components when creating our subassemblies for the formwork conditions. On the screen, there are all the options for conditions with the variables for each length. These variables must be defined within the custom component variables list. There's five width variables you can use. I'll start with FPT and the types are thickness zero, thickness one, pilaster depth zero, pilaster depth one, and bulkhead offset. You can also use a variable to control the height of the items within the custom component using FPT height. This example I'm going to walk through is a simple one and won't be as complex as some conditions might require. The component logic can be quite an in-depth discussion, so we're going to keep it simple to show how you can utilize these variables when creating your conditions. Some of these steps I'm going to speed through, like creating the custom part. The only thing I'll point out here is the custom part is going to include the outside corner and two panels. The start point of the component is at the outside corner point of the wall and the direction is along one face of the concrete. Now that I have the custom part created, I'll open up the custom component editor. In the variables list, I'm going to define three variables the placing tools can modify. FPT height will be used in all cases to define the height of forms. For a corner condition, FPT thickness zero and FPT thickness one can be used. In the formula column, I'll add some default values. Now I'm going to need to add some bindings to the component plane for some of these parts. And I only need to bind the end handle of each panel since those are the only points that will need to move. And they're going to move relative from the start point of my component. For this component, let's say this panel is always going to equal the panel thickness plus the inside corner so that they match. The length of panel will then be the wall thickness plus the inside corner length, so we need to define a variable for the inside corner dimension. I'll assume the inside corner dimension is 6 inches. The formula for the panel on the left will be FPT thickness 1 plus the corner dimension. And that formula can be copied to the other variable, and we just need to change the variable name so it ends in a different number. Now I'll hide the variables that shouldn't be visible, and I'll add a label for each. Now I'm going to save the component and perform a quick test just to verify that my component is working based on those variables. By changing the fields in the dialog, you can see the panels are adjusting and everything looks to be working okay. One variable I did not add yet was to control the height of the panels. So I'm going to go back into the component editor and add that capability in. The height's going to affect the profile of the panels. So just to add some extra spice to this example, I'm going to add a variable that controls the thickness of my parts, or the thickness of my form. From the input of height and thickness, I can use those lengths to create and define the profile. The panel profile will then be FPT height variable with my separator and the panel thickness. Now I can add an equation through the custom component browser for the profile under general properties. Now I can exit and save, and this completes this section I'll be working on in the component editor. Now we have two steps left. First, we need to make the corner assembly file, and then we need to specify that assembly file in our conditions configuration file. So I'll launch the corner assembly wizard from the component catalog. 
and I'll just follow along with the instructions here. So I'll pick the outside corner point in the direction along this wall face. And then I'll select the custom part. Then I'll pick the next direction, but no need to select any other parts here. I'll save this as parametric outside corner. And now we can proceed to the final step for modifying the conditions configuration file. And just a note here, once I created that assembly file, it places that into my model folder in the formwork tools folder. Now to create this condition, I'm going to configure this through the formwork placing tools dialog. We can do this by going to the conditions tab and pressing the configure button. I'm going to create a new L corner condition. So I'll first select the condition type from the list. I'll create a new condition and give it a proper name. I'm not using the plus signs for any technical reason. I'm simply just adding those to make the newly created settings obvious in my list. For option one, I'm going to select a condition that's already pre-made and it's just a six inch inside corner part. In the second assembly dropdown is where I'll select the condition that I just created. Now I'll save my changes and it will be ready to use. From the conditions, I'll select my option now when I insert it, it should match the inside corner perfectly. If you change the value fields in the dialog, you can see it will modify the objects that are inside of my custom part. To see how effective this can be in a more practical application, no matter the concrete dimensions at the corner, the component is always going to adjust automatically. If you were to create conditions for every possible height of the form panel or wall thickness, and even if the wall thicknesses are different from each other, you could easily have upwards of 30 to 40 conditions that need to be created just for one corner. So now this can be used for any concrete width and height too. The height is not read from the concrete geometry, but you can enter the height in the dialog and it will write that value to the FPT height value in that custom part. This is a very simple example and the objects in reality are going to be much more complicated, especially with the accessories that I didn't even take into account. Creating components specifically for conditions can really save a lot of time with setup, especially with creating and maintaining that formwork content. You could either make components for specific condition types like the L1 I created, or you can make components that can be used in a variety of conditions. The steel ply formwork system on the Tuckle Warehouse uses this component, and it uses this in a lot of various conditions. You can pick which placing tool variable to use, pick where the panels go from the start point, place them to the left, to the right, or centered on that start point, or even specify if there's a center filler or dimension for the inside corner. Now, this can be very overwhelming to create, especially if you aren't too experienced with custom components and formulas. Creating some like these doesn't come easy, and it just takes some practice. And you can see from the variables of this component that there's a lot of logic going into it and can seem very confusing at first. So my advice is to start small and build your way up to this point if that's where you'd like to be. I'd also recommend to looking into components like this one and sort of reverse engineer the thinking and apply it to your own situation. Even a simple component like this outside corner can be a really good start. This can save you from having to create a corner assembly file for every possible height of the inside corner. And the only variable it's using is the FPT height. It uses this to determine the item shape, and depending on that height, it uses a simple if statement to create or not create these certain wedge bolts. That concludes the content for this presentation. If you have any questions about this topic, please reach out to your local Tekla support or post on the discussion board, and you can find more information in the Tekla user assistance on this topic. Thanks for watching.